the more you know about it, the less risky it is, right? So if nobody knows anything about apartment syndications or what the word syndication means, um, why would they invest in it, right? And it's, you're not going to educate them in, in one day and be like, okay, are you ready? It's, it's nurturing and it's taking time. Welcome to Syndicating Your Way to Wealth. I'm Katie Cepeda. And I am Yelfrey De Leon, and today we have another amazing speaker with us. Yes, today we're very excited to have Kalaya Sabring Ramirez. He is the founder of Hawaii Local Developers. Kalaya's journey into real estate started with hands-on experience as a commercial electrician and a passion for construction. Today, he shares practical insights on navigating Hawaii's real estate market, discussing the realities of new construction, fix and flips, and the intricate relationship between active income and real estate investment. On today's show, he will be shedding light on the challenges and rewards of building wealth in the real estate industry and systems that have worked for him when raising capital for deals. Hello, Kalaya. How are you doing today? Good, good. Big time difference. But yeah, thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, excited to talk about some stuff. The first thing that we want to know, why don't you share a little bit about your story? You know, tell us a little bit about your background. How did you start in, um, you know, multifamily or just real estate in general? How did you go from electrician to, you know, founding your company? Yeah, so short answer would be you know when i was working in the building commercial electrician um there was this the last job site that 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 i worked at i was working by myself um getting like a journeyman rate and i was pretty much responsible for handling all the lighting in the in the in the building um so running conduit running piping doing all this stuff but i didn't have anybody else really working with me at the time um so i'm working in this building for eight hours or 10 hour days um and i would i would listen to stuff but instead of listening to music um you know i was getting paid a pretty good wage at that time i was probably in like the high 70s per hour um and i always knew like i wanted to invest in something right you know i was in the beginning like okay i want to invest in stocks or i want to invest in crypto and all this other stuff but then eventually i started um listening to you know this podcast about real estate and things like that. So I really started kind of getting educated about how everything worked. I actually got pre-approved as an electrician, buy a house, um, but I didn't have the down payment. So I was gonna save for the down payment. But through all that time, I was actually just educating myself for probably around six months or more um, in that building every day, like listening to to um, real estate stuff, you know? Of course, you know, like the Robert Kiyosaki and Grant Cardone stuff. But, you know, seeing that kind of level of like, oh, multifamily, oh, that's too big. So, you know, that's what kind of got me um, as far as I've already worked on a couple renovations and houses here on the island, but just as a worker. So I just kept, you know, educating myself, buying books, listening to podcasts, and that kind of filled me up to... uh kind of take some action. Um, I heard a quote, it said, um, action is a pressure release valve for information. So, I mean, once you kind of get enough information, then I kind of went out and found the deal. Yeah. I love that. And, you know, if I hear that correctly, you know, everything goes back to educating yourself, you know, uh, talking to, to the right people and, you know, attending networking events and kind of, you know, just like all the, the education uh, piece. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that's really important, you know, reading books and stuff, Definitely. listening to podcasts. And I, I would like to know, how did you get involved in the construction project aspect? Um, you know what? I was actually living in Colorado for some time and... Uh, I wanted to move back to Hawaii, but I didn't know what I was going to do for work. Um, and, you know, actually a lot of people from Hawaii that I grew up with, like that's the pretty common path to do construction. Um, so, yeah, that's how I got started. I called a couple of friends before I moved back and then um, I joined a apprenticeship program and then I went from there. Um, and, yeah, that's what got me started. So 
from being an electrician to then uh, getting into the construction projects, I'm sure that there was a lot of learning, a lot of hiccups. What were some key realizations that you could tell listeners when getting involved into real estate? Um, for me right now, um, yeah, I'm doing new construction and fixers and stuff like that, but it's really the construction experience. Um, that is one of the things that has kind of helped me, but then there's still a ton of stuff that I could use to, to learn, um, as far as like little details in, in things. And, um, actually now kind of seeing like, you know, like I was talking about earlier, um, you can listen to podcasts, you can read books, but these are like just concepts, you know, um, you're going to learn the most when you're doing the thing. Right. So there's going to be little details and you know what they say is you don't know what you don't know. So just, you know, going through the process of all of the deals that I'm working on is getting me to that, like that stress level to learn more, you know, and to, to get better. Um, as far as to me, uh, at least in, in the new construction, and even if you're building, say, a multifamily or you're renovating a value adding a multifamily project, you're going to have to either manage that project manager that's managing the contractor, or, you know, you're going to have to do it. Um, so right now I'm, I'm real active um, since I'm a little bit smaller, right? Like I'm real active in the managing um, portion of the, the contractor, managing of the funds, managing of the timelines, making sure everything, you know, makes sense. Um, because that's how it is in the beginning. You're, you're, you're that one person that's kind of covering all bases. Um, but yeah, that, that's a big learning thing that I'm going through is just how to get everything better. Um, and of course, you know, eventually I want to put people in positions to build out a team, but it just takes time. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it's a lot about building systems and implementing processes that, you know, can run itself automations so that you can focus on, you know, making those valuable connections and doing all their uh, more critical parts of the business. So that's great. Okay, so just switching gears a little bit here. So I know that recently you raised capital for another deal, which immediately uh, helped you become a GP on that deal. Can you talk a little bit more about that experience and how was that for you? Uh, you know, and yeah, what, what have you learned from this? Yeah, so... Yeah, right now for all of the single family deals, we do like a, a syndication model, right, per deal. Um, and it really comes down to, yeah, relationships and, you know, value, what type of value you bring into other people. Um, and that's how I got into the deal. I, you know, met the sponsor at, a, at an event, right? It was a smaller event. You know, there's maybe only 15 people uh, or maybe 20 people in that, in that ring. So you kind of almost get to, talk to everybody. Right. Um, and yeah, I mean, I mentioned to the sponsor, some things that I was working on and that I'm doing. And then I just kept, you know, following up with him as far as helping him with some stuff that he had. And, you know, we had a couple conversations about some deals that they had coming up, um, which was a 50 unit. Yeah. In, in Dallas. And then they have, um, basically that, that owner, they own, the same, I think a 66 unit right across the street. So their plan was to buy this 50 and then it would lead to, um, you know, going into the 66. Um, and they're just gonna, you know, focus on that Dallas market, but you know, yeah, it's just, I built a relationship with him. I think he sees a good, um, like he sees something in me as far as, so he's been investing since he was 20, but he's 40 years old now, or like 41 or 42. So, but he's been, um, active in the military the whole time. He just recently retired. He's been building his businesses and, uh, taught me a, a bunch of stuff. Cause I had, a, I had a ton of, uh, questions and, uh, about, you know, things that we've learned about cost segregations and, um, saving on taxes and things like that. So he's in a sense, a mentor, but, um, that opened up a opportunity to uh, get on a deal. And yeah. 
That's great. So, uh, you know, again, it's that concept of adding value, you know, what can I bring to you that you need in, in your deal, in your syndication, on your team, uh, and how can I learn from that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's great. So, you know, I just want to dive in a little bit more into, you know, that experience, uh, you know, what role are you currently uh, having on this deal and, you know, just tell us a little bit more about that experience. Yeah, so um, they do a weekly Zoom each month um, and then we use a Slack channel uh, to update on the, on the progress of the project. But I'm more so, um, yeah, investor relations with, with the people that I did bring on into the deal. Um, and yeah, so the timeline for this deal is about, it's a three-year project. Um, and for me, my kind of focus on what I would like to do is just, you know, do more front-end work as far as educating more investors, um, bringing them to the networking events. Like we have one this, this coming Wednesday. Um, and, you know, having those people build that relationship with the, with the sponsor. And then also, you know, this is a long term thing right so it's it's takes time you know for to introduce new investors to the sponsor or have them come to an event each month or have them jump on a zoom call or educate them more right so that's um my role as far as how can i you know be a part of the next deal right because it's not just about this one um and yeah you know that's that's pretty much my role great and what would you say uh, in terms of strategies, what have you found more effective when trying to attract investors? Um, I would say media presence is, is one thing, right? Um, and then also, yeah, letting people know what, what you're doing. Um, that's been my main niche for, you know, building yourself a brand of like, what are you doing? Um, and building up like my site and my credibility as far as these are how many projects I've worked on already. Right. So my plan with that site is, um, I've been doing it about two years, but what would it look like in five years, right. Or six years, or, um, there's also a link, uh, for multifamily in there. Um, with some edit, you know, I need to build that out more with some more educational content. Um, but that's exactly what it is. Like when people meet you for the first time, they're going to be like, they don't know what you've done. And if you don't, if they never ask, they would never know. Right. right. So if you can have something as like, as far as your track record of like, hey, this is all of the stuff um, that I've done. And, you know, there's just one thing that I listen to this guy, uh, Hormozzi, right. He, he talks about have have so much proof that there's no denying, you know, what, what you've done. Um, and that's something that you can create, right? You can have something like, hey, I've done 300 unit deals and we've exited all of them. And that is also a big thing as far as how can I help this syndication group? Um, because their site, they've done and they've exited multiple deals already, over four deals. Um, and they're doing smaller deals. They're doing uh, a 506B, they're doing smaller deals um putting together projects or they're doing even just joint ventures right um and yeah you know that even on their site they're just building out that uh their credibility but that's something that i see as far as like i'm doing it for myself and i'm like okay how could i i wouldn't say force feed it but how can i help as much as i can um for this for this group because that could you know build more credibility and uh ultimately have more people part of uh, projects. We just actually had a event, I think on Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. Um, and I brought my video guy because uh, the sponsor was speaking and it was in a multifamily event. It was just, it was just uh, an event for veterans because it's a veterans day. Right. Um, and he was speaking just about, you know, his, his journey and his path. And uh, he invited me, but for me, I was like, I contacted my video guy um, and I was like, Hey, can you come today and film, make some stuff for him? Just so 
it's just you know free stuff for him to uh add to his pages that's great um that's amazing so you know you touched on a few very important points here so building relationships adding value to others in any way shape or form that you can uh and social media presence and i know for a fact that you have done an amazing job with your social media presence uh so you know keep up doing the the great work there uh it looks like yeah i mean if you think about it whenever you talk to an investor or anybody about a deal the first thing that they're gonna do is okay who is the team who is working on this deal let me search who's Kolaya. The, the first thing they're gonna do is they're gonna go on yeah. google and you know search search up for Kolaya. you know what has he done what's his track record who are the people that he's working with and you know all of that is part of your credibility right and your social media presence uh, because this that's the first place that they're gonna go. They're gonna check all your socials, your Instagram, Facebook. Are you on LinkedIn? Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like you're say you're not soliciting anything on your on your pages, but mm -hmm. you're gonna be like, who are you? You know? Um same with Oi is a small state. So same with that. When you go to a networking event or something, um, people, you know, oh, what is your your page or what is your this or that? And then, you know, of course Instagram has followed by so there's always mutual friends right and then it's always like oh how do you know so and so um and so on so yeah absolutely so you know again you you already touched on a few things uh regarding building relationship but when you think about building relationships right what what do you think sets you apart from others in terms of the way you build relationships with people and investors to bring them onto your own projects because you know since you mentioned you not only have you done this on the multifamily space right but you also do it for your other projects that you're currently working on and like single families house flips uh etc so um can you touch a little bit more on that yeah i think people just recognize that i'm i'm passionate about what i do um, i, I think that. that's 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 a big thing and you can't fake that right you can't just magically say stuff and not do it um and that is another big thing that I'm, i i try to do is you know the things that i say i try to do them um and i think that is yeah that's pretty much the big determining factor um passionate passionate about it and people follow vision right great leaders have a good vision um on what they want to do and communicating that as far as hey this is this is what we're trying to do we're trying to do 10 15 houses and we want to get an lp position as a multifamily on a 2x equity multiple um and we'll do that for the next three years right um or you know that's that's basically how you lead people with with vision so Making that vision a reality is is something that you know we're going through and normalizing it right. At in the beginning, it was like, how are we going to do that many projects? And then now it's it's more so a a normal thing, and you know, kind of putting out the fires every day to keep it going. I love that, Kalaya. Passion and vision. That's definitely something that I agree will attract people um, when they see that you have that passion and you're dedicated in what you're doing and you're living up to what you say you're going to do. For sure, I, I do agree that that's one of the most important things. Absolutely. Determination and also, you know, following up, following up, uh, keeping your word. Um, because people will recognize you for that. They will remember what yeah. you said. I feel like at first they might be hesitant, but the more they see that you're continuously doing what you say you're going to do, you know, they might not invest at first, but later on they'll say, okay, this person is continuously, you know, doing these projects. They have that vision. They're, this is like their second or third deal. I want to try to invest in this next deal. Yeah. Building trust. Mm-hmm. So Kalaya, can you share some setbacks or a challenge that you've encountered and how have you been able to overcome it? Yeah, um, coming short on, on a raise, that, that is one of the things that I just recently, you know, kind of experienced. Um, 
And a solution to that is, you know, kind of do more front end work as far as education, right? Education, they say education, the more you know about it, the less risky it is, right? So if nobody knows anything about apartment syndications or what the word syndication means, um, why would they invest in it, right? And it's, you're not going to educate them in, in one day and be like, okay, are you ready? It's it's nurturing and it's taking time to uh, exactly like you just said. Um, they might trust. be watching you along the whole time. Right. You know, they might you might do a deal right now, and they'll watch you through the whole three five years. And then when you exit it, they're like, oh my god, I could have been a part of that project. Um, and that's just you know, I've had people. Um, already have that where i've had a meeting with them and then maybe six months eight months later we have another one and then now they're ready right so sometimes you know the time's not perfect for everybody um but yeah that was kind of a challenge as far as yeah it was just a struggle you know it's kind of discouraging right but you got to take it as okay what can i do to get better or like how can i eliminate even running into this problem and it's it's like do more work i guess you know do do more work um you can't expect a, a certain result if you haven't done any you know front-end work and uh yeah that that is a, that is a struggle and then also too with just like the single family stuff is just exactly like you said building out a better system um building out a better process because you can get it better and make stuff a lot easier for yourself um you the thing about it is like you're your own worst enemy right the things you don't do are going to be the things you're going to have to do because you didn't build a system or you didn't, you know, create a budget or you didn't dial in what's the order of operations for the project. So, um, yeah, it's, it's ongoing and it's, it's everyday type of, uh, things on how, how can you improve, uh, everything that you're working on and yeah. Awesome. I love that. And yes, I totally agree with you on that. You know, it takes time. It takes time to build those systems and putting those processes in place. And it's just like you mentioned, nurturing those relationships. It's important. It's critical uh, when you are trying to pitch a deal, when you're trying to bring capital from investors. So, you know, it's about that trust and credibility and nurturing those relationships and, you know, sharing educational content because they may not even know what the words indication means, as you mentioned. Right. And, you know, the more you the more you put yourself out there, the better it will be for you. Um, right. You know, when raising capital. Yeah. Yeah. And and just like that event that I was telling you about, maybe about four months ago, I went to that event. Um, and I met a doctor there. He was at that event and he's invested in over 25 uh, syndications. Um, nice. And these are minimums of, you know, 50 to a hundred thousand dollars. So he's a part of 25. So he's got 25 exits, but he actually, he didn't, he's not invested with uh, uh, a ton of different people. So he's really specific on the operators that he works with. Right. And, you know, I think even for us, um, yeah, we, we might meet some people that have been doing it for four years, five years or more, but that we just, there's no shortcut to that, right? Yeah. We just got to put in that time. Exactly. Yeah. And, and also going back to what you said in terms of systems and processes, so figuring out what didn't work or what isn't working and what do I need to implement? in order to, to improve and to become a better capital raiser or better at whatever it is that you're focusing on. Right. What advice would you give to investors who encountered, you know, some obstacles in real estate projects? Um, I would say one, don't give up. And then two, there, there's always going to be, there's a, there's, always gonna be shit there's always gonna be uh hairy situations that you kind of got to get through like literally like these past two weeks is an example of that just because um we're trying to coordinate a handful of projects we got projects starting we got um two listings 
going live. We got two more that are just about ready. Um, this guy's calling me. And it's going to get hard, you know. It's, it's going to get hard, and you kind of got to weather through that, you know. Um, and if you give up, I mean, that's, that's what's going to happen. There's, there's no more, right? So there's going to be problems. And, and, again, like I was just talking to the sponsor a couple of days ago, and that's, that's what he was saying is uh, he's got those when you own a business or something, you, have, you might have those nights where it's 2 in the morning and you're, you're thinking about, about stuff or your uh sleepless nights or problems that you know you gotta face and that's the thing that people don't see right you want something that that somebody has but you don't know anything about the problems the things that they they went through and and got through right um and they won't share it with you unless you know you ask um because there's, there's, you know, hairy situations that uh, you got to maneuver through. And it's something that needs to be expected. You know, um, yeah, there is no easy, easy way. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if I hear you correctly. Everybody wants easy. Yeah, it, it's, it's all about keeping consistency and, you know, making sure that you stay there and you know overcome those overcome those challenges um you know and i like the way you put it because a lot of people do see the you know gratification the result the end results but they do not see all the time and effort and sleepless nights and dedication that you have to put into this to make it work it's tough so yeah uh, thanks for sharing right. that yeah so hawaii has a unique real estate market how does the local landscape impact your investment strategies and especially in terms of new construction yeah so um i'm doing projects on two different islands uh oahu is the main uh like capital island um smaller um but i'd imagine you know just like new york it's an island so there's only so much uh that can be built and truthfully, the permitting on the Oahu Island isn't, isn't the best. Um, you know, I've got, I have some friends that, you know, projects are taking over one year, year and a half just for a permit to come back. So I don't do too many new construction stuff here, but um, the housing prices for the, the uh, renovations and the fixtures are a lot higher. I mean, the median price of houses here is about like a million dollars. Um, so it depends on the location, one. Um, and then two, where I'm building the new construction on the big island, bigger island, um, and there's a lot more land. So the land's cheaper over there. Um, it's around where we're building is like thirty to forty thousand, and uh, the houses are around three hundred to four hundred thousand. Um, so it's a different type of niche um, as far as what you can build them for, and then what is your all-in cost, and then what is the the retail price that the the market's giving, right? Um, so yeah, two two different two different markets, two different neighborhoods. Um, and yeah, tell us your long term goals for your real estate company. Yeah, long term goals. Um, shoot, are you thinking numbers or just what I would like to do? You know, I, I would like to. So one thing again, yeah, I keep bringing up this sponsor, but one thing I learned from him is. Uh, he has businesses first, right? He has businesses first that free active income so that he can invest into apartments um, and to get that tax benefit. Um, the biggest thing I did learn about real estate is it's a tax shelter, right? So just so happened my business isn't uh, something else, right? I, I don't have franchises or other businesses. My business right now is like new construction, and then uh, getting the active income from, you know, fixing and flipping properties. Um, but that business or that active income could come from, from anywhere or anything you build, right? Um, it could be from gyms. It could be from salons or whatever um, you want it to be. And then you want to take those, you know, LP positions. Um, so ideally with my company, you know, I would, I would want to grow it to, 
you know, the basic numbers per project is we could get away like with a net of around 50,000 per house. So easy math would be, how can I do 20 a year? Um, that was always kind of been the reverse engineer thing that I've, I've thought about. Right. Um, and how can I get that to a system to where uh, it's, it's working, you know, by itself with project managers or a team. Um, and then what, what should I do with that capital afterwards? Right. And then uh, it would be, you know, getting those, those equity multiples, because I think, I don't know how many doubles you are away from, uh, 10 million or a hundred million or something. Right. But those two X equity multiples, um, are, are huge. And if you just keep, keep, you know, creating a conveyor belt is, is what, you know, they talk about also. It's like, if you're investing in a deal this year, or they're trying to, they're trying to buy a deal every quarter, right? Because that means hopefully in the future, every quarter you're exiting one or two, two deals, right? And that's in five years. You're doing work for five years um, and you're seeing the result in in that fifth year. So for my company, I just, you know, want to have more revenue and have more, um, more exits, more deals and get everything a little bit more smoother. Awesome. You know, one thing that I like that you shared is that reverse engineering thing, right? So it's like, if I want to raise a million dollars, and I know that I can, you know, the minimum investment amount, it's $100,000. Uh, I know that I need at least 10 investors, each with $100,000 um, commitment into the deal. But in order for you to get those 10 investors, you know, you have to sort of like reverse engineering this and say, well, in order for me to get 10 investors, I have to reach out to a minimum of 100 qualified investors so that I can have at least a 10% conversion rate and have them invest into the deal. So, you know, this is something right. that we have to do all the time. It's something that, you know, it's powerful. And it's like, if I want X amount of income, how many investors does that translate to? If, you know, I want to close on X amount of deals, how many LOIs do, need, do I need to have accepted and, and so on and so forth. So this is powerful. Thank you uh, again for, for sharing that. I just wanted to ask you if any of the listeners would like to stay in contact with you, reach out to you, how can they, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, um, primarily I use Instagram. It's uh, at kolaya.realestate. I got my website here. It's hawaiilocaldevelopers.com. Um, LinkedIn, same thing, Kalaya, Sebring Ramirez, and so on and so forth. Um, 